name is Joris. Um, I'm working for Materialize here in New York. Um, I've been, been invited tonight to speak a bit about innovations in fashion and 3D printing. Um, in Materialize, uh, Materialize is actually a, quite a big company. Um, their focus is mainly additive manufacturing, a bit the same way that Shapeways is doing. But we're actually focusing also on different things. Uh, I want to give you a bit of background about the company so that you would understand how we come to fashion and, and art and things like that. So within the company, we have um, what we call uh, medical divisions. And um, we create our own software. We make our own machines. So very large scale 3D printing machines up to seven feet in length. Um, we have um, two divisions that that make the consumer division in uh, Materialize, which is MGX and iMaterialize. iMaterialize is like Shapeways, an online platform, and MGX is actually um, uh, the brand of Materialize that's um, focusing on um, uh, interior goods, lighting, furniture, etc., on a high end level and uh, at a mid signal level. So, and uh, I'm creative director for MGX, and I'm also working for additive, uh, for AM as we call it, and this is really service, a service to the art industry, to the fashion industry, uh, to the automotive industry. I'm here in New York only focusing on three things, which is art, design, and fashion, and anything that's new. And um, So basically, MGX, what is MGX? Um, it started in 2003 as a first generation of consumer goods. So in 2003, it was really a test what can be done with the technology. It was only used for prototyping and it was something new. So we, we, did, a, um, we did the tests with, um, uh, with lighting. It worked out quite well. And we, we continued with furniture, very high-end uh, furniture that went to galleries, museums. So, but for us, it was a very good test to understand the technology and how, how we could use it in, uh, um, as an end-user product. Also, I'm also working for uh, AMS and um, mainly on design-related projects, art-related projects, and um, uh, fashion-related projects. In this case, design, what is design? It uh, can be everything from uh, additions, furniture, uh, shop windows, etc. Everything is mainly custom, unique pieces, small series, but always the focus that the end product is not a prototype anymore, but a functional object. Um, my main market is the art market. Lots of clients here in New York um, use our technology for um, art pieces. On the right, you can see a Frank Stella piece. Just to give you an idea about the size, it's more or less um, in feet, uh, between 10 and 15 feet. So it's quite a big piece. Um, it's not uh, one print, uh, push the button, one print. This is a, a work of almost four to five months. Just to give you an idea, it's not only pushing the button anymore on a 3D printing machine, but it also uh, involves a lot of engineering. On the left, you see a project where um, an artist is using our technology as an in-between process. Um, he uses an epoxy piece to make a bronze piece afterwards. And you have several ways to, um, to, go, to come to that uh, object, actually. Now, we're actually advancing quite fast now, and it's a very interesting technology for artists because it makes life much and much easier for artists. So, so how uh, the last project, that's also the project where I'm actually here, is, is fashion. Fashion is a very interesting uh, uh, industry for us because it was uh, something that you don't, really, you don't really combine 3D printing with fashion because it takes style, so it's not really obvious. So, so we started to look for collaborations. One of those was, for example, with Stephen Jones, the, the famous millionaire. Um, we asked him to do uh, a design a hat. Uh, in 2008, we started collaborating with Iris van Herpen, a Dutch-based designer, and um, the idea was really to break the boundaries of fashion. Uh, it would, these are not my words, but the designer's words. So, um, so before 2012, all the press we had was mainly uh, very specialized press like wallpaper, etc. But in 2012, Time Magazine um, released a piece about the best inventions of 2012. You know, one of them was the 3D printed, uh, the 3D printing, uh, 3D printed dress. Sorry. So um, 
I'm going to explain you a little bit about how we came to that dress and, and how it all began. Um, so in the beginning, 2008, for us it was a project, uh, a research project, uh, what can be done with, um, uh, with a fashion designer. So we actually combined uh, uh, the forces of an architect with a fashion designer, in this case Daniel Widrick and uh, Iris van Herpen, and we really started playing with the technology. With the, we were experimenting, experimenting with the materials and we tried to look for new aesthetics that were not really common in fashion. So a second generation of dresses, what we've done is um, to see how we could integrate flexibility from starting from the design, so not the material, but the design itself. Um, and you can see we were uh, from, a, from a top part, we went to a, an entire dress. Um, in this case, uh, after this dress, we started uh, experimenting with body scans. So we started, uh, we scanned the model and then we created actually the, it's almost like a sculpture. It's not really wearable, I would say, but it's, it's, def it's not something that you can sit on a chair. I, <laughs> but it, it shows you what the technology is capable of and also finishing wise it's a metal plated version of a, of a, of a if I'm not mistaken, a, an epoxy. Um, so you can go really detailed, very intricate uh, designs. So we moved on to the next dress where we want to show off about patterns and how uh, things like that. So. So this is all hot good to I think most of you are interested what what's available for a regular fashion designer. Like these these pieces are shown on a haute couture runway. It's not accessible for everybody. So we have to be really realistic in this. And um, this is another this is the last dress we printed for Iris van Herpen. And the very interesting part about this dress is that this is a very durable material and a very flexible material. With this dress, you can really sit on a chair, walk around. So I, I, I challenge you to break it. It's very, very, I, for a 3D printed material, it is very uncommon that you can really play around with a material like that. I think this is very exciting for us because it's the first time in nine years for me that I see a material that is actually usable in many I fields. It, this opens up an entire new wave of products for fashion, design, art, etc. So um, I can show you a little bit about the production process afterwards, um, but I'll show you the movie after this presentation. So how are we going to bridge the gap? Second wave, I think, is about finishing. Um, this maybe is a bit uh, of uh, nothing to do with fashion, but it shows what's possible. So you could actually um, put kind of a fabric over an epoxy. You, in this case, it's called flocking. So all the fibers are actually, it's an electrostatical process where the fibers are attached to the actual material. So, so you can create a velvet-like structure. Um, also interesting, we've been experimenting a lot with uh, surface finishes. In this case, this is a cellular structure, a fully functional chair. <laughs> Um, and it's completely mirror polished. The only difference is that we even we didn't even touch the chair. So it's a chemical process uh, from a silver nitrate, and it actually comes out of the, the the tank like this. So we 3D print it, and then with a with a finishing, we create a mirror uh, mirror polished look. The interesting part about this is you can already see the applications uh, for, for example, accessories. Same way, uh, different technologies, metal plating, we can actually uh, create small coatings of, of metal, nickel, gold, silver, over an epoxy piece, uh, plastic pieces, metal pieces. So again, very high-end solutions for accessories, definitely possible. These are all inventions that come from the uh, automotive uh, aeronautic industry that we try to implement in other uh, markets. This is, I, we've seen that it is working to implement a certain innovation from one market into another. It's, it's definitely something we try to do, sometimes uh, successful. A third one, it's actually uh, software solutions. You can actually mimic and fake lots of patterns uh, by using software. And for example, leather patterns, these are all things that are already existing. Uh, and with, with soft materials like this, you can really create a bag with a functional bag with a leather pattern. So, 
Um, then fourth and fifth, these are two points that I don't really have an image for, but I just want to make a point that I think at this point in time that for additive manufacturing, it's very important that uh, it's a very interesting technology, but I would, in this, in this moment in time, uh, be the advocate to use 3D printing together with another technology. Because then you can create really functional objects that have an, an added value. And lastly, um, I also want to speak about people who uh, create the files, and I think Bradley is one of these people, he's gonna speak later on, is very, became very, very important. Um, file generation is almost a new craft. There are lots of people who can create uh, 3D files. I think Duan already explained about the importance of that. But there are only few people that can really create a very nice and, and, and interesting file. So, um, so what are the realistic applications for this? Um, for the moment, you have what is already definitely possible and Duan already explained it, is um, jewelry. You can really print in high res stainless steel, titanium, gold, uh, sterling silver, ceramics. So, um, uh, jewelry is one of these uh, markets that are already like established. Another market is shoes. Um, I wouldn't be uh, a big fan to print a shoe in one piece because I, it's you can walk on these shoes in these shoes, but it's not really functional. It's functional, but it's not really wearable. I would say. What, what is definitely possible is to print pieces of shoes. Look what Nike did. I don't, I don't know if you see the article of Nike, is they have actually created a piece of a shoe that's only that uh, made through 3D printing technology and it's actually made the shoe better. So I would say more or less the same thing is you can print a shoe in one piece. It's definitely possible, but I think it's a much better idea to combine technologies in this case. And so the same for accessories. I think accessories is a big, big market and it's just a question of time. And when I say a question of time, it's a question of months before you see the first results on the market. So um, neck pieces, uh, bags, everything you can think of. So um, the only thing I'm going to show you that's left on. This is a movie that shows actually how the latest threat of Iris is uh, in manufacture. So it's not a dress that is made out of one piece, but uh, it consists out of several pieces that are put together. So as you can see, it's actually welding the, the material layer by layer. actually look for the object in the, in the machine. So it's, it's a bit of archaeology and then you clean it, you sandblast it and then actually it's ready to uh, finish. Big enough yet to make a complete dress, but it will be soon possible. 